Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Holly Shields here for Calcane TV, welcoming you all to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. This show where we bring to industry leaders, successful business owners and market experts all under one roof to help you discover the latest business insights. Today we're exploring Webit Nano Limited, a leading developer of next generation semiconductor memory technology. And to shed some light for that on, on us, sorry, is CEO Mr. Kobe Hanok. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Welcome to the show, Kobe. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Nice. Likewise. Great to have you on. So for viewers who might not be aware of what Webit Nano does, can you tell us a bit about the memory technology you're developing and what markets you're targeting, how it's used as well? So um, the the semiconductor domain is now uh, prevalent you know, everywhere. We have semiconductors in, uh, in our cars, in our computers, in our cell phones, in our refrigerators. And semiconductors can't really work without memories in them. So you need to store the data somewhere. Uh, we're focused on what's called non-volatile memories, which are memories that retain the data even when you unplug them from power. Uh, best example is a USB stick that you have, uh, you put your pictures or a video on and you can walk around with it. Uh, today's technology uh, or common non-volatile memory technology is called Flash. It's been around for a long time already. And uh, it's, again, it's, it's uh, running out of steam and to a certain extent. Uh, we're developing a new technology called RERAM. It's resistive RAM. It's a new uh, approach. And our technology is significantly simpler to manufacture, cheaper, uh, faster, lower power. It has a lot of advantages over um, the flash technology. That sounds incredible. Now, what kind of advantages does it have exactly? So we're talking about uh, low power. Uh, we're uh, significantly lower power than flash. And when you're talking about mobile design, uh, mobile devices, uh, your cell phone, you don't want to charge it uh, every few hours, right? You want to charge it uh, maximum once a night. So you want to have uh, elements in there that don't require a lot of power. Uh, we're much faster. So for example, for artificial intelligence, where they need the speed and, and doing a lot of uh, calculations, uh, we can actually work also in high temperatures, which is really important for the automotive uh, industry today. And, you know, an average car already has something like 200 uh, electronic components in it. So it's, it's becoming a, a computer on wheels and um, uh, they need a lot of memory in there as well. Oh, that's very impressive. It sounds like the technology has evolved very fast and is really ahead of its time now. Incredibly developed features there. Now, you've recently entered into your first commercial deal with a US-based semiconductor foundry, mm -hmm. Skywater Technologies. What does that agreement entail? So this is really uh, the one biggest milestone in the lifetime of uh, of a company right you you uh, we've been developing the technology for um six years already uh this is very complex technology it requires a lot of efforts and then you get to this one moment where that's it there's someone who's actually willing to pay for it there's someone who's willing to move forward uh skywater is a great partner uh it's one of uh, uh the more I would say uh, prestigious um, uh, techno uh, technology fabs. So a fab is where you manufacture semiconductors. And these guys have partnered with us to transfer our technology to their facility. Uh, we'll be qualifying it there and then making it available uh, for uh, products that want to use the technology and want to manufacture there. So this is really a very, very important milestone. Um, maybe just in a few words, uh, in our domain, there's really kind of a golden triangle. There's Webit as the company that develops the technology. There are the product companies that take this memory and embed it into their product. And then they need to manufacture and they go to a fab to manufacture. Uh, in the beginning, when you just start, 
you're basically stuck because the customers say, oh, wow, that looks like a good technology. But uh, where, where are we going to manufacture it? You go to the fabs and they say, oh, that's, you know, it looks really neat, but we're not going to invest in, in making our facility able to manufacture this when we don't know that there's any mark, any money coming in, you know, any revenue behind it. So you're kind of in a catch-22 situation and we managed and break that and uh, we now have this agreement with Skywater we're working with them very closely to move forward uh, Skywater has already a very significant customer base so we'll be approaching them we'll be working with Skywater both uh, towards their customers and also uh, we'll be bringing uh, a lot of companies that we've already been talking to uh, to Skywater Right. That sounds like a very impressive deal. And thank you for breaking it down like that in case it wasn't too clear for the viewers how all those components have to work together, together to get the business going. So I understand the first stage of the agreement involves transferring your technology to Skywater's manufacturing facilities and then qualifying it. How long does this process take generally? So semiconductors are a, a very delicate technology. You know, where people sometimes hear the term nanometers, you know, we talk about uh, like Skywater's fab is 130 nanometers. A nanometer is 10 to the minus nine of a meter. It's tiny and, and all of the manufacturing here is very delicate. So what we need to do now is to take what we call the recipe from our R&D facility at Leti, we've been doing all of the R&D work up to now in a, in a fab called uh, Leti in France. They've been great partners on the R&D side up to now and continuing. Uh, and now we need to take that recipe and transfer it to Skywater. And it really is like a recipe when you cook a cake, when you bake a cake. You know, it, it has, it tells you exactly what steps you need to go through and what materials you should be using in each one and how exactly you should be putting them in and so on. And we will, you know, obviously, like between kitchens, you don't have exactly the same model of the oven. You have a slightly different tools there. So we will need to adapt, make those little adjustments to the, the new tools that, um, Skywater's, Skywater has, uh, and this requires running uh, what's called wafers, silicon wafers through the fab to check and verify that this works. This, you know, this can take uh, several months to go through and check and verify and run again. Uh, running a set of wafers, what's called a lock through the fab, uh, can take uh, several weeks or uh, maybe up to uh, a month and a half or two, and, and you need to do a few of those. And once we're done with that, then we need to go through what's called a qualification process where we need to run a lot of wafers through the fab. We need to make sure that we really are ready for mass production. So all of the what's called dyes or, or chips, if you want to call it in a simplistic way on a wafer operate exactly the same. They give exactly the same results, the ones that are in the middle of the wafer, the ones that are on the side, the ones uh, on different wafers, that everything is predictable, repeatable, and and really, and, and you have a good yield, uh, you don't have any defects. So that again, you need to run a lot of wafers through the fab to make sure that you're at the quality standards and meeting all of the technical parameters as defined in the specification. Right. Well, that's perfectly understandable. There's obviously a lot of steps they need to take to make sure everything is running smoothly. Now, uh, I know that there are some supply problems with semiconductors in the especially automotive industry at present. How is Skywater involved in addressing these? Well, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a crazy time in semiconductors. The demand is growing uh, significantly. Uh, by the way, for, since your audience is, uh, is a financial audience, I'll just point out a, a small piece of data to help you feel what's going on. You look at just 10 years back at the top 10 market cap companies in the world, there was only one that was somehow related to uh, semiconductors. You look today at the top 10 market cap companies in the world, nine of them are semiconductor companies, basically. 
you know, they, they're very heavily involved in uh, semiconductors. And that's really the transition that's been going on. The world is now heavily relying on semiconductors. The demand is huge and it's not just in cars, it's everywhere. Any, anything that you look at has semiconductors in it. So, uh, by the way, that has been a big challenge for us because quite a few of the fabs have been saying, hey, um, you know, we're just so busy manufacturing, now generating revenue. We're not going to stop and start running wafers through the fab with a new technology that doesn't generate revenue. We need to capitalize on this opportunity. And I'm really happy that Skywater looked at it and said, oh, wow, you know, this is a great technology uh, and we can see how it can help us be more competitive with our customers uh, moving forward and they are actually making a major investment you know the time in the fab that what's called opportunity cost is huge and it's really great uh to have that um to have that partner working with us absolutely i can imagine that's the case just to touch on customers as you mentioned are you currently taking sorry talking to other potential customers all those discussions only begin once your tech has been qualified so no, actually, we are talking already to quite a few potential customers. We're trying to do everything in parallel. Yes, of course, customers want to see that uh, the, the technology is qualified and ready for mass production. But you need to remember, customers take a year, a year and a half from the moment they decide to use the technology until they design it into their product, they test their product, they're ready and their product is sent to mass production. So if they wait until the technology is qualified, it's gonna take them another year and a half from that point. So we're talking to potential customers who are willing to uh, start working now, start looking at the technology now, realizing that it will be qualified in, uh, you know, in a year or so. And uh, so there's a lot of work. Actually, we, we already have uh potential customers that are calling skywater now we connected them to skywater and uh so we'll uh, we'll be working on this in parallel to uh reduce the time to revenue that is really good to hear i must say just before we wrap up now what are the next milestones investors should keep an eye out for so we're working on several paths in parallel you know, right now we're starting the technical path with Skywater and there's going to be a lot of work there and obviously achieving the technology transfer and qualification and so on. In parallel, a company like ours has to continue pushing the R&D side and constantly improve the technology. And in our space, if you don't keep running forward, you're basically falling behind. So there's going to be a lot of work with Leti uh, continuing uh, the development. But of course, you know, the most exciting part is now the business side. Uh, we're going to be talking to potential customers, trying to bring them on board and have them start uh, working with the technology as fast as we can. Uh, we're going to be talking to other fabs. This agreement with Skywater is uh, non-exclusive. We'll be talking to a lot of additional fabs. Um, and and trying to get them on board i think you know there's going to be this uh, sense of oh wow another you know skywater is already going to lead we can't be left behind and, and i hope we'll be making more progress also with that so a lot of well, a lot of work ahead of us absolutely a lot of work and obviously a lot of exciting things there and we hope to see that expansion of your customer base and also expansion of your work with other fabs as well that's something we can keep an eye on mm -hmm. Yeah, On that note, you. it's just about time for us to wrap up, but I've got to say thanks so much for joining us today. It's been great to hear your insights. Thank you very much. Pleasure to have you on. Viewers, if you've just joined us, we've had a stellar discussion with Mr. Kobe Hanok of Weebit Nano. You can catch this episode of Executive Corner Expert Talks on the Calkine channel later today. But for now, thanks for your time and stay tuned to Calkine TV for more live updates.